And we are back. Thank you so much for your patience. We are here with our first place, our champion, our newly banned contender, Kai. Kai, congratulations. Oh my goodness. I, I don't even know what to say. At first, when I first started this tournament, I thought it was going to be like, oh, okay, well, here comes another baby jelly cup for me to lose. But here we are now. I wasn't expecting this to happen. I do want to thank everyone who actually did support me and thought Kai Kai might win this. And I was going to think that Sir Nerdbird was going to go after me with a clean Sir Nerdbird sweep. But holy heck, I, I am so flabbergasted and so hyperly excited to even say anything. But uh, yeah, I did get some experience along the way and this is what I get. I really want to thank you guys for this. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, we do have a couple of questions to be asking of you. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Uh, well, first off, how does it feel? I mean, you've already said a few things, but you are now banned from future Baby Jelly Cup tournaments. Uh, how does Thanks. that feel? <laughs> I feel like I am officially ready to get banned by Clone Jelly. First Baby Jelly, and now I'm ready for Clone Jelly. Nice. <laughs> oh how, my goodness. How did you feel about, like, your opening hands and all that sorts? Like, we got into Grand Finals, and I know you definitely did not have the best of hands, but we also saw Nerdbird ha struggle to get, like, good hands. Well... That's the only thing I was thinking about because when I thought I had bad hands to draw with, I thought for a fact that uh, sometimes Nerdbird had the worst hands in general. But that was like right under my nose. So, more of the point of the question that I'm going to be making here is like, what, when you are making your deck, what, what do you put, what goes into your mind about the deck making process? Like... Are you oh, keeping track of process? like? Oh, are you keeping yeah, track? Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. What kind of stuff are you thinking about? How are you building your decks? How do you try to avoid building decks in a way that put you in positions where you top deck bad hands so often? Well, truly, for starters, when I had like when I had experience fighting Sir Nerdbird, I couldn't even figure out whether the cards I would have. Like, I didn't know I would have. Super Chomp to start out with because this gives out a ton of detail in, in in terms of starting off in most maps like River Drip for the most part and whenever I started to think about where I would put it down I would actually have to start experimenting it even during the middle of my practice sessions like I might as well have to rearrange which cards I play around like, for example, when I play out, like, when I first watch, uh, uh, you know, a Table Turf YouTuber's, uh, simplest guide into Table Turf, you already know which one, but I, for the record, I will not say it for a reason. But, uh, either way, if I were to agree, I would just say that, uh, for example, if I were to put something on top of my deck, I would just put in at least five to six starter cards in the map I would play on on that said deck and then in the middle row i would believe play a mid card i would play i would just put in some uh, mid cards all the way like uh, tri stringer splatana all the above and then at the very bottom can be my you know can actually be my small cards but a little bit too much could be it kind of not interesting and when it comes to x marks the garden like most of the time i love playing x marks because I remember saying that I had a idea between two decks in X Marks, one from TBO and the other which I already have. In other words, Jack's deck. So combining Jack's deck with another actually gives me greater results of starting off a map with the best card possible. It leads to some good situations depending on the RNG you have. It's not always about RNG though. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. 
So uh, another thing, uh, in the grand finals, game two, you had a, was it in grand finals or was it somewhere else? But there was a, you played an aggressive, a really, oh no, yeah. You played a really aggressive Mudmouth against Zay. Yeah, that's oh, what happened. I really want to explain a lot more detail for it, but to give you the short story of it all, I would say that if I had Horrorboros, I would definitely play Mudmouth somewhere there. But if I start off with either Dynamos, I can just leave the Mudmouth behind and hope for the better with a different, uh, you know, long card. Like... Steel Eel, or any of the, uh, you know, any of the other long cards as well. Because again, if I had Horoboros on me, I could just ditch them all and just keep the ones I also have. Which is why I need to put them into two separate groups. I see, I see. Uh, Jack, do you have any questions? Yeah, I don't know if you asked it already, but, um... That on X Max Garden, I I have like one question. Um, you are running, uh, you're running the combo from Juven with the Annie into the Tri Stringer and so on. Um, yeah, I've learned why, that from Juven. Yeah, why don't you run the? Um, is there like a specific reason you don't run Spike as well? Because both of them would fit and you wouldn't be that backloading. Hmm. That could be a good idea, though, but Annie seems like quite the most ap aggressive because of how she is. Like, unlike the other cards, like Spike and Merch, this barely does anything well. And don't even get me started with Wavebreaker. Wavebreaker is like the worst, in my opinion. Like, if I try to do Wavebreaker on there instead of Spike, Merch, or Annie, it just leads to some very bad results. And it doesn't even work that way. Which is why yeah. I have to think about it. Like, why, which is why I've learned from Yuvin and you entirely, and see if I can find any other alterations. Yeah, I mean, any and the merge, up, uh, merge are like both the same. No, not not merge. Spike are like the same cards. Only there's like only one small difference. So I yeah. think both should work for you. They they, they could work both it. for me, but if I were to combine both of them in X marks. That's that's where the I draw the line down there. That's why I couldn't figure out where I'm going to put down Spike and Merch if in the base of my in my base in X marks if I have Horoboros on me. And it's bad yeah. enough having one starter block in your base trying to actually get in the way between the two of them. Okay. I uh... Two, two more questions that I've got for you uh, before we move on. Oh, hang on. Uh, hang on a second. It, it'll be a while. Okay, you know what? Actually, sorry to interrupt. Uh, tiny little phone call. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, we'll, we'll just do one last question and I'll let you get on with that. Yeah, it like <laughs> yeah don't worry easy. about it. It's fine either way. I still have time. I just, yeah, sorry. It was my ringtone phone. What's your, give us a fun fact about one of your Splatoon OCs. Oh, one of my Splatoon OCs? Well, looking right here, if you look who I am right now, this actually gives me a huge character inspiration. I've been watching Alex Spider, an SFM slash Gmod animator, and it reminds me of him, so this is what I wear ever since Splatoon 1. And in, well, this actually reminds me a bit with Mario because of how he looks, and he's red. And red is my true favorite color. Not to mention the fact that Sometimes the shorts, on the other hand, reminds me of Mickey Mouse. Minus the Mickey Mouse shorts are black and it has leggings. That's where my character inspiration is, uh, which is a little fun fact about my OC. Very cool. Very neat. Uh, congrats again. Congratulations on first place. And we look forward to seeing you compete in future events elsewhere. Oh, don't worry. I will be available in Table Turf Open. So, I'll be available on TVO if I can, but uh, hope I get to see you guys there. Yeah. And as for Sir Nerdbird, I know you're up next, but I wish I could shake hands with you right now in game. Just to say GG's. But I can't in this game. Well, either way, either way thank you so much for having me up on here. And if you excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and jump down and make sure I get bullied by Clone Jelly. 
or whoever, whichever comes around. Goodbye. Bye. Later. All right, and that was Kai Kai, who managed to take first place, second up, but uh, wait, I don't know what kind of terminology I'm going for here, but definitely still a phenomenal individual, phenomenal placements. Uh, we do have our friendly nerd bird, Sir Nerd Bird, to be correct. Uh, Thank you very much. That is, yes, that's my full title. <laughs> yes. Sir Nerd Bird, congratulations on second place on your first event after like, what has it been? Three five. years? It's yeah, just over a year. Uh, not quite a year, no. Um, Twelve. TBO five. Twelve years. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did how did it feel to get back into competition? Um, I think um, because I am very busy with the university work, I don't get much time to play table turf. So I'm mostly kind of just uh, doing server admin stuff and uh, kind of just seeing what's going on. I had been quite out of practice playing against people for quite some time, uh, but recently I decided that I was actually going to stop using my 136 size generalist deck and actually start building decks specific to stages. So I think I've got about four decks now. Uh, you might have seen on the stream that I use one deck quite uh, quite generally for Thunder Points and X Marks mm. and sometimes uh, Lakefront as well. So that one's um, something I came up with mostly. I think that all of my decks have got a little bit of Yuvan uh, like inspiration in them because I, I you know Yuvan is best player in the world, so why wouldn't I? Um, yeah, so that's it, it was very I, I felt like a lot of my games uh, went very well, I got the draws I wanted more or less all the way up to the end, I was very uh, surprised when I beat some of the top seeded uh, players, because I think I went through two of like the top five seed um, so that, that was pretty good yeah, no, like Consider like if we were just going off of your seed, this was an incredible run where you just came in and you just went through like pretty much everybody. Uh, I moving on to our next question. I I know there's one thing that was shaking Jack up that you did a couple of times on Thunderpoint or was it River? It was River that I'm sure he would like to ask of you. Yeah, like there's one specific play I was criticizing the whole time and I'm just going to ask it to you now because it's connecting to the deck thing you just said. Why are you like, um, you had several big cards in your deck like um, DJ Octavio, Horrorboros. Why did you decide to go for the uh, Zipcaster turn one? Because as far as I know, Zipcaster turn one just gives you a disadvantage if you like, um, yeah, it just gives you a disadvantage, and you had you definitely had better openings, in my opinion. Yeah, that's uh, to be honest. Um, at that point, I was a little bit fatigued. I think this was my second um, River Drift game against Kai Kai in uh, the reset grounds. So this was like I'd been playing table turf for the past, uh, I think, four hours. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in retrospect, I should have done uh, DJ Octavio and then turn two done Zipcaster. Um, but at the time, I thought that. Better, yeah, I, I mean, all of those River Drift games. Uh, look, what I'm about to say does not uh, negatively reflect on my opinion of Kai Kai's playing. He did very, very well. But I think all of my luck in the entire tournament completely ran out in Grands. It, it, it kind of just disappeared. Um, I think the two River games I did were some of the worst I've played in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I, I will not lie to say that we were there were a couple of plays, not just from you, uh, but there were a couple of plays overall in that those grand finals, especially at bracket reset, uh, that caused us to cringe a bit in pain. 
but I mean, it makes I sense, and it. I could definitely like not me being harsh, not me being critical. I definitely had a feeling that something was going on. Not like bad luck was definitely there, but I I could I was able to pick up like something was off with your play because it was not the same as before, even if you were getting really bad luck. Like it's yeah, I think. Um... You know, I haven't I haven't played in tournaments. I generally don't like playing tournaments because I get uh, quite stressed, um, and I'm quite tired. So yeah. I think all in all, it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, if possible, I need to enter more tournaments. Um, this was actually, uh, you know, a pretty lucky thing of of I was able to shift some things to one side and play in BJC tonight, and I really enjoyed it. It was a great experience, and. I got to play a lot of table turf, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, but you probably won't see me for a while, uh, just because of university work. Fair. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a lovely experience, and getting all the way to grands on my first BJC is, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy with that, uh, despite how grands ended up going. I've got a couple of quick sh uh, sh shotgun fire questions for you, uh, if you want to take Go them ahead. before you run off. The first one would be. Hold on, my brain is... My shotgun is very badly loaded. Hold on, I'm just recalibrating <laughs> it. Uh, having gone through this now and finishing a four-hour tournament, uh, what is something that you could you do in the future to help mitigate fatigue? Um, I think up until I was at finals before grounds, uh, I was playing more or less constantly. All of my games were right after the other, all of the sets. I think I played like three, four sets, basically back to back. Um, and that meant that when I got to Grands, uh, and I didn't know how long it would be until my next match, I kind of just, just, just sat at my desk, kind of waiting. And in retrospect, that was a really bad idea. I should have, you know, walked and got something else to eat and maybe, mm -hmm. just, like, sat in a dark room for a bit. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll figure out something different to do, uh, next time. Yeah. So. One's body is very important to care for, and when you kind of forget to neg when you end up neglecting it, which, I mean, that also happens in school a lot too, it's kind of hard to avoid, uh, it, it definitely takes a toll on one's body. Uh, second last question, what are you studying? Uh, I am studying veterinary medicine. Uh, so I'm studying to be a vet in the future. I'm, uh, yeah, two years into my course, so it's another three, four years until I'm out there practicing. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm up to. If you ever see I take an unhealthy interest in, in birds and animals in general, that is why. And then the last one for something a little more lighthearted, uh, also to, the, to some, the most difficult challenge ever presented to them or question. Give us a fun fact about one of your OCs. Um, this is this is very complicated. Um, so I, up until very recently, I didn't have really any OCs. I think the the character in my uh, PFP is just uh, the loadout I used in Splatoon 2, and then I kind of kept that going as a uh, just profile picture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I do have an OC um, called Bird Nerd who is a small cyan bird wearing um, my uh, profile picture Inkling's glasses and the turquoise hat who uh, goes around exploding uh, the Inkling and my PFP for amusing reasons. Uh, so he's a eldritch deity and that's, yeah, that's, that's my one OC is that bird. Well, I have good news for you. I love them. That sounds incredible. I would give them had pats if it didn't mean I would immediately explode. You would immediately explode, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, not the first time. Congratulations on second place. Thank you so much for dropping by. And uh, yeah, best of luck in your academics. And we look forward to seeing you be able to sort out the chaos of life to drop by again in the future. Thank you very much. It's been uh, lovely talking to you. Yeah. And last but not least, at least for interviews. We could interview everyone, but I feel like I, I would fall asleep before that happened. 
Uh, but we do have our third place participant that I'm not gonna sleep on. It's Zay! Zay Arbel. Hello. Zay, congratulations on a very phenomenal and well-earned third place position. How do you feel? Thank you. How do you feel? Um... I still feel kind of mad at myself because of that misplay mm -hmm. against Kai, uh, Kai Kai, sorry. Um, however, um, I think I'm starting to accept it, you know. Uh, and overall, I think I played really nice because um, I lost against Nerdbird and I went to loser's bracket. Uh, but somehow I survived. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was that was really fun. Uh, I think this was the most fun I've ever had in Baby Jelly Cup. That's good. Yay! Fun. <laughs> I sound really sarcastic, but I'm actually happy. I'm glad to hear that. Let, let me let me see let me see the Chad's. Uh, journey here because you said you lost a nerd bird pretty early on yeah yeah you lost at c26 I had a couple of good games against a few people lost to nerd bird I'm gonna be upset if you beat up one of my arms people Scrolling. yeah I'm just going to ask a quick question then yeah um Zay you place pretty good in the last couple BJC's as, uh, as far as I know like this time you place third the last time you placed fifth, how do you feel like about? Do you think you can actually maybe win the next BJC? Totally. Ooh. I'm super super confident because I improved so much between this BJC and the other one. So I think um, if I practice well enough, um, maybe perhaps in the next BJC I will finally win. I don't know, but I'm confident. If, if I can yeah. take a moment to say that's kind of one of the reasons, another reason why I kind of like how BJC is a month, is it makes each one feel grand and spectacular, and it means you have, people have a month to grind, practice, hone, and refine for the one that, one event that they feel is most likely to be in their hands, because you go to TBO or something and uh, Jovin is right there and is like, Hi! You want to try winning? <laughs> And you're like, uh, no thanks, I'll pass. And then you come to BJC and you're like, I could at least get one win under my belt here eventually. I just gotta like, yeah. you gotta get a little bit of luck and a whole lot of practice, which you've got lots of time to practice for the next one. What are you thinking of do, what do you do for practice? Um, I usually just go grind for card sleeves, uh, cause I'm obsessed with them. And I also just got the DLC, so I'm gonna grind the new the new NPCs as well. Uh, sometimes I also just uh, go to in-game looking for a game to spring it. Uh, but it's not as much. Uh, I should do it more often, to be honest. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, looking at some... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you relive some pain and trauma right here. You had a... Oh. You had nine special pass. You had nine yeah. special and you passed. Yeah, that was just painful. Yeah. It was extremely painful. So, uh, um, follow me with the train here. I'm guessing from what happened there is you accidentally pressed the pass button instead of special and quickly went to press choose the thing you were gonna special. Yeah, I was gonna special Dynamo. I was, I was gonna. Uh, get a special off of it. I think I was gonna do the double th 312 because I think that was turn three, right? I think so Yeah uh, And I was gonna do that. I was I was really confident, but I didn't double check and I just passed it What was your hand like after that cuz it was like it was really painful to see but <laughs> It also looked like a situation where it's like, if you had a couple other big cards on your hand, you could have still turned things around by playing, like, two different five-thirteens five, five or something like that. 
Yeah, that's just the thing with a game. Sometimes you just have bad RNG and you just gotta go with it. <laughs> well, no, like, did it's you just have anything really, really... else in your hands? What? Because after you, after you passed that, accidentally passed that dynamo roller and built up to 10 special, I don't rem I think you didn't really do anything for a turn or you passed or then you just ended up playing the 312 to close things out. Yeah, I can't really remember. I just remember Bear. what happened with the dynamo. After that, I just knew that the match was just over. Yeah. Because I didn't really have any other big cards to play. And uh, I know I asked Kai about this, but I'll ask you this as well, as it is kind of relevant, especially with how some of your games went, even without, like, accidental painful whiffs like that. Like, there were situations where you just had would come across a little bit of bad luck, and... I want to ask your opinion on what you kind of do to try to build your decks the best way you can to try to mitigate that luck. Or are you just like, do you just go straight to the wall and you're like, I'm getting lucky or I'm burning down. There's no in between. Yeah, this basically the second option. I don't really think about that when I'm um, making my deck. I just, I'm still really... Um, really afraid of putting double 312 in my deck because I know I have bad luck especially when I'm in tournaments so it's just not that uncommon for me to just get my both of my 312s uh, in my hand uh, it didn't really happen in this tournament so I was really happy about that but yeah I do really have a lot of bad luck so um, after I started seeing that I just started minimizing the amount of smalls I have in my deck. So now I have three maximum, you know. I mean, except box seats. Yeah. Uh, Jack, do you have any more questions? Uh, yeah, no, not a thing. no, no. All right, well, Zay, I'm about to hit you with the biggest chattest most difficult question you could ever hope oh, to no. encounter uh you've definitely not heard me ask it the previous two people so you, you better have not have had any time to think about it give me a fun fact about one of your splatoon OCs. um okay so my main splatoon OC is called zen and they play the bass and the the drums Oh. They're part of, like, a, a, a duet, you know. That's cute! That's cute, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations on third place, and we look forward to seeing you participate in future events. Yeah, thank you for having me. Bye. Ciao! And with that, I believe that is it for this 16th Baby Jelly Cup. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I would like to thank thank the, the, the ARMS people who managed to pull through and show up and participate, even if you didn't make it too far. The fact that you tried out this game, looked into it, and just like, saw what this community is really about it means a lot to me it means a lot to everybody in the table turf community as well look forward to working alongside y'all more and having more fantastic times with that all said and done i do believe it is time for us to draw a close unless jack you have you have you do have something you want to say i don't remember what it is but there's something important to say I don't even remember as well, but uh, yeah, thank you all for joining Baby Jelly Cup uh, oh, this God. time. We, we can't close. Yeah. No, it's imp it was something important. Was it, it? I don't even know. I know it was important. And and we're going to be set. It's going to hurt when we realize. Uh, was it? Was it important? 
Yeah, I'm sure it was important. I don't think so. Well, I guess... I guess we'll have to close it out without worrying about it. Maybe another time. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. Uh, don't forget to make... If you saw anything cool or exciting, to make a clip if you go back and watch the VOD. And we will see you next time with more Table Turf action. Ciao!